So let's talk about that evolution process. And I want to start with the highest mass stars on the main sequence. Those are the ones that become the supergiant stars. So they start with a high mass and then they swell up. And as they swell in their dying moments, then they become supergiant stars. So as a result, there's not that many supergiant stars because there's not that many high mass stars on the main sequence in the first place compared to low mass stars. So these supergiants are very rare. And um, this is just another phase of an aging high mass star. It doesn't last forever. And when that high mass star finally dies, it does so in explosive fashion and it leaves behind a neutron star or black hole. So we'll talk about these stellar remnants in week nine. Uh, they're really cool. All right, so what happens to all the other mass categories? Well, stars that are kind of the same mass as our sun live somewhere in the middle of the HR diagram here for most of their lives, and they become just regular giant stars. So again, they, these stars are staying the same in mass, but they are swelling up so that they're becoming a larger radius. And so that causes them to be a higher luminosity, and it also causes them to cool as they become large. Um, so these giant stars also are just a phase. The stars here don't last forever either. And they actually follow kind of, me of a meandering track uh, that was described in the video I showed you at the very beginning where they get hotter and more bright and then they go back down in brightness and stay about the same temperature. So they actually die at a higher temperature than they live. And so this is kind of the path of the giant star they end up as white dwarf stars. So again, white dwarfs we'll talk about in week nine. And then the very lowest mass star, the red dwarfs, um, like I said, their lifetimes are longer than the age of the universe. So we've never actually, you know, it's impossible to know exactly what would happen to a red dwarf. Um, but based on our modeling, based on what we know about other stars, it's very likely that they too become white dwarfs. So they stay at about the same luminosity and they just get hotter and um, become white dwarfs as they die. So there's one more category that could be on the HR diagram, but it's not usually plotted. And that is the brown dwarfs. And so we kind of just briefly talked about these before. These are not stars. They're just objects that could have become stars, but they didn't have enough mass in them to start up nuclear reactions in their course. So they're not actually stars, but they're not exactly planets. Um, so they're kind of in an in-between phase and they would be at this very low luminosity and low temperature part of the HR diagram. They still put out light because they still have some non-zero temperature um, and they just happen to glow in the infrared just like you and I would. So they can be very uh, low temperature objects, but they still put off light. 